my path, teachers, EDU, staff, this is the introduction for using the Epson system and wireless teaching technologies. What we've done with your Epson system is retrofit it. The Epson systems, while they may not seem that old, are kind of using an older technology, and wireless really wasn't part of that equation. So to make that happen, we have retrofitted them with speakers up top to give you some good sound reinforcement throughout the classroom, and then also an Apple TV. It's a small black box, and it's in your room in one of two locations. It might be strapped right to the top arm Again, out of student reach, but just above the projector, strapped down up there. That could be one location. Or it could potentially be, and there really isn't a cabinet here, but for those of you that have the classroom cabinets, if you had a second HDMI video connection run down into that cabinet, it's probably inside your cabinet. The nice thing is that the remote controls for these are not line of sight, and yours might look a little different than this one. These actually work on radio waves, so they can go right through the cabinet door with no problem. We've tested that already. Shouldn't be an issue. So what kind of capabilities does that give you? Well, it gives you a couple of things. The Apple TV has what's called AirPlay technology built into it, which allows Apple devices, I shouldn't say just Apple devices, any device that supports AirPlay to connect to it wirelessly. Big important thing. Everything must be running on the teacher Wi-Fi network. So the Apple TV has to be on teacher Wi-Fi, which should be already taken care of for you. If you have a staff assigned iPad, not a student one, those won't work. If you have a staff assigned iPad, it must also be on teacher Wi-Fi. Or your Mac laptop, if you're using your Mac laptop, it must be on teacher Wi-Fi to see that device and connect to it. To switch over, the Apple TV has been connected to one of the HDMI connections on that projection system up there. Simply use your remote, find the HDMI or video input button, and scroll through it. And I'm going through these here. I have a bunch of different connections. Yours is most likely on either HDMI 1, this one is not, or if I hit it one more time, HDMI 2, and that's where this one is connected. I can't tell you which one yours is connected to, but it's probably HDMI 1 or HDMI 2. Simply keep hitting that until you get to that one, and you should have a screen similar to this. You also need to make sure you turn the power on, and all you have to do is hit the menu button on your remote control that powers on your Apple TV. You never have to worry about shutting it off. If it hasn't been used for 15 minutes, it automatically powers itself down. Volume control on these systems can be used with your Epson remote. Simply use the volume up and down. Your speakers high up on the wall should be already preset to medium volume, and this should be more than enough to control what you need for volume. One key component we need to talk about before we jump into actually connecting to this is setting up security on your Apple TV. You're going to have to excuse me for a moment. I don't actually have the remote for the Apple TV that's supposed to be here on this demo night, um, as this is, again, one of the pilot classrooms and everything. So I have to use my phone to get to this Apple TV, but it'll accomplish the same thing. So what I need to do is go to Settings. Just like your Mac, it's the little gray and black cog icon. And I go into Settings. And you come up and scroll through until you find AirPlay. And you want to check out your AirPlay settings. Now, some of this stuff should be preset for you already. AirPlay should absolutely be on. Allow access. Conference room display. Those are your two big security settings that you need to check out. So if I go into allow access, it says for everyone. And if I want to be really restrictive, I can click Require Password. So what are the differences there? Well, by default, if you do nothing else and have this set up this way, the first time a new device connects, it's going to pop up a PIN code on here, a four-digit PIN code, that you must see and put into your device. That prevents 
devices from other classrooms in your building from connecting to your system. If you put require password, give me a moment, it'll come up with a password that has to be entered every time you want to use this. For some of you, you may need that additional restrictive security. That is totally up to you what you want to do. Conference room display. You can come in here and turn require pin every single time. So by default, I'm assuming most of you are using your Mac laptop. The first time I connect, if you leave these settings and don't change anything, I'll get a one-time four-digit pin code. And once I've connected this, my Apple TV will remember it every time I want to connect. For most of you, I'm guessing that's the setting you want. But if you want to get a little bit more restrictive without going to that full-blown password option, you can come here to require pin every time and turn that on. And if you turn that feature on, every time a device connects, it will have to grab that four-digit pin code. Okay? Those security settings are totally up to you. We aren't going to restrict them in any way. It's up to the individual educators in the classroom. Do what you think is best. All right, that's the basic intro for the Apple TV with the Epson system. And now we're going to move into how to actually connect.